Hi, in this video we're going to be writing some code to do client-side form validation using JavaScript only, and our own JavaScript without any frameworks or libraries. So this is a mock-up form for signing up for a social media platform account. So our JavaScript is going to validate all fields, making sure that none of the fields is empty, making sure that the names contain only letters and no numbers, uh, the password is of a certain length that we can specify whenever we want, and they can, the password needs to contain a set of characters that is completely customizable as you will see later and it checks as well that the passwords match and the email is a valid email address and then after all of this it allows us to submit it and uh, gives us a welcome panel so let me give it a go to demonstrate to you how it works so if I go to first name and if I go away from that it says that you must not leave it empty so if I put like John 1 as well it says you it must contain only letters so I put John, now it's valid, I put Doe here, and I've now said it like that the password needs to have at least one letter and one number. So if I put one, two, three, four, five, it will complain that the character has to be at least six characters long, which is what I set it to now. If I put six, it will say it has to contain a letter as well. If I put A, now it's valid. So if I put now here one through six, again it's gonna say passwords don't match because they don't actually match. If I add the A, now they do match. And now I go to email, which is the simplest part. And I do jane at email.com. And now it's a valid email. So if I click sign up, it loads and it says sign up successful. Welcome to social ape, John. I gave Jane because the picture of the woman made me think of Jane instead of John. But you get the vibe. So let's actually start making this form. Okay, so here on my desktop, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it valid form. I'm going to open that with VS Code. And um, I'm going to create an index.html. And with Emmet, I'm going to do doc tab and it will scaffold this for me. I'm going to do the title of the page will be sign up. Uh, sign up wall social ape because that's the name of our website apparently. And uh, we're gonna be using materialized CSS, which is a CSS library that implements uh, Google uh, material design standards. So you just click on get started and get these two, both the CSS and the JavaScript. And let's paste them up here, and then let's take the JavaScript and put it at the bottom of the page. Let's get rid of this comment and this as well. So at the start of the body, we're going to have a container to push everything to the middle. And at the top of the container, we're going to do the header one, which, is, which just says sign up. And here we're going to have a, a row, so a dot row. And um, here we have our form. And this will not take an action, but we'll take a class of um, column and since it's going to ha take half the width is going to be s6 because there's 16 units just like in a bootstrap if you used to use that which is like call sm6 or something um now we're going to give it an id so id of my form and before i can, uh, put anything in the form uh, i'm going to add the other component the other side of this which is the uh, the image so Let's put that in a div, so .call.s6, and we'll put image, and I'm going to bring in this image uh, of this woman on her phone. Why not? Because she's on her phone, it's social media, it makes sense. Alright, so I'm going to get rid of this old thing, and we're going to actually do some inline styling here, which is apparently an international crime. <laughs> I can't be bothered to create a CSS file just to style this. So let's do um, width of 100% so it doesn't become bigger than the actual div itself. And we're going to give it a border radius just to make it um, look more satisfactory. So a border radius of 6 pixel. I'm going to actually give it an opacity, um, not, not opacity, opacity of, actually let me wrap the text, of 0 0.85 so it doesn't distract too much attention away from the actual form itself. Um, yeah, okay, so let's start with our form. The first field will be the, the name field. So actually we're going to put this in a row as well. 
we're gonna further divide this row into other rows because we need to another uh, nested layout thing. So I'm gonna have a dot input field dot column dot s6 to take half, and this is gonna be uh, our name. So it's gonna have a label, and it's gonna be for the first name, and it will say first name. And I'm gonna have an input, and I believe this won't take a class. Yeah, it won't take a class. It will be a type text and it will have a name attribute which I'll explain why we need later and which is first name in this case and then it will have an ID so that we can use it so first name like this uh, lower camel case and then uh, actually not yet so let's just um, well let's just leave these three fields for now uh, we're gonna add another field later, but if I add it now, it's gonna be a bit confusing. So we'll do a span dot help help a text, and we'll leave that empty. And I'll explain this later as well. So let's copy the whole thing, and so this is half, and then the other half would be the last name. So this will say, uh, let's actually select both of these. So Control D, select and Control D, last name, and select this and Control D, and do last. Oops, last name and yeah that span st stays empty and then here we're going to do another row which will have the password and the confirm password so the first one will be a label for password and it will say password and we'll have an input and it will be of type password and it will have a name of password <laughs> I know right with capital P and it will have an ID of, you guessed it right, password. And uh, we're gonna have a span dot helper, helper text. Oops. Sorry about the typos, it's kind of hard to uh, talk and type at the same time, especially if you're a newbie like me at this. And um, wait, what did I do? Yeah, I made a mistake. All of this should be inside of a div with a input field. So that materialized CSS will know that this is an input field and style it accordingly. And column and S6. And let's, I saved that and prettier did all of that, by the way, if you're wondering why auto formatted. Okay, so let's paste that and let's control D here. Let's actually sh change all of them to password and then we'll, or no, actually, we just need to change this. So confirm password like this and then paste it here no actually you know in the ID and then here will be confirm password separated like this and Pascal case and here as well confirm password and everything is fine so now we have the other field uh, so here and a row and we're gonna have a div dot input field dot column dot s12 going to take the whole width and this will be our email so label for email and we'll say email oops email and then we'll have an input of type email and uh, the name will be email uh, with a cap actually with a capital E and ID will be lowercase email close that and we're gonna have another span helper text and it's gonna be empty and now we need our uh, submit button so we're gonna have a button dot uh, it's gonna have the class of BTN and then BTN waves dash effect which will give it the waves effect thing that Google material uh, material design has or materialize CSS or both and we're gonna give it waves light now you're gonna give it so colon submit to give it a type of submit wait I messed that up the colon should be attached to the to the thing whoa okay okay I didn't know that this interaction existed sorry about that let me just remove that <laughs> and then just give type I was trying to to do too much apparently Emmett sometimes doesn't like when we're trying to be smart asses. <laughs> All right, so sign up 
and I believe our form is done so let's save and I'm gonna run a command in this um, directory called live server you can actually install the uh, what you call it the extension or if you have the npm package you just run and live server you can actually just open this with the browser and it will be the same just as this is hot live hot reload rather so if I change anything here or in a script it will automatically detect that and run again okay so this is our form uh, everything behaves fine obviously nothing is validating now but there's a problem now if I click sign up no actually wait if I do this why isn't this validating there should be like the uh, HTML5 validation email of type email this button is inside the form oh there we go I don't know why that took uh, some time okay so we want to get rid of that behavior so we want to attach to form we want to give it this uh, no validate thing directive or attribute or whatever so that the, uh, the HTML5 uh, thing validation doesn't apply and it doesn't now it just submits obviously we're gonna change this later it's not gonna have these variables here so let's start creating the actual script so let's create a script script.js and uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in all our inputs so let's put a comment here saying input fields and let's start bringing them. So const first name will be document. Oops, document. Okay, I can't type. <laughs> dot get element by ID, and the ID will be um, first name. And let's actually just copy this and paste this four times because we need uh, the rest of them. So the second one will be let's control. Uh, co Select control D, so last name, uh, oops, and then we need, uh, what do we need, password, and we need confirm password, confirm password, uh, with a capital P, and we need um, email, and we need our actual form itself, the form, so const document dot get element by ID my form like this and I'm gonna set the uh, green and red of the validation uh, validation colors so let's do validation colors that uh, materialize CSS uses so that I don't have to actually put the code each time I'll just declare them here as variable and use them so the green so const green equals and this will be hash uh, 4 C A F 5 0 and then we need the red so const red equals um, hash uh, F 4 4 3 3 6 alright let me make sure I got those right okay I got those right all right, so first thing is we're going to be validating this, the, fir the first name. So let's do that. So function, not const. I'm actually, I'm not going to use uh, error functions because I don't think there's a necessity for it here. It doesn't simplify the syntax or anything. We're not going to be doing a lot of like callbacks or anything where using the term function makes the code look ugly. So I'm just going to use traditional syntax. Validate uh, first name. And it won't take anything and so let's put our steps as comments um, what we're gonna do now for this field is that we're gonna check if it's empty and uh, if it's empty we return we don't check for anything else we don't check whether it has only letters or not because that's illogical because if we do that it, it's less performant like uh, and it, we might put an error where saying like oh this doesn't have any letters when it actually doesn't have anything which doesn't make sense the user would think that we don't have a brain <laughs> okay so first thing is that check if is empty and then second thing we're gonna do is that check if it has only letters okay so here I'm gonna do if and I'm gonna use a function that we haven't created yet 
so if check uh, check if empty and we're gonna pass the whole field itself first name and not, uh, we're not gonna pass the value and I'm gonna explain why in a moment and if it if it is empty then just return don't check anything else uh, so let's create this function here so function I'm gonna paste that check if empty and that takes the field and what it does is it's gonna use another function as well uh, so we're gonna do if is empty and don't worry we're gonna create this as well and we're gonna pass this field dot value dot trim function because if we do a space and we go here this should be uh, this should be considered empty and it should raise an error because so now if we do this each string we pass is gonna trim trim it from the sides it's gonna remove the extra uh, white space so if it is empty then uh, so set field invalid and and return what do we return here return true yeah return true because it's empty so not false and then else we do something else and else we set it to valid so so set field valid and these are to do's we're gonna do them in a second and return false because it's not empty so return false let's create this em is empty function so uh, function uh, is empty takes a value and then if that value is equal to an empty string then return true and then here we just do return false uh, which is kind of the equivalent of the else here because if this is false then, then yeah just return this you get the vibe <laughs> okay so here so this function is created now now we need to handle the logic here setting the field invalid now what I can do here I can actually write the code and then actually later make this code into a function because we're not gonna need it somewhere else but I don't want to make this tutorial too long so I'm just gonna make functions bear with me if you get confused it's gonna clarify itself in a second so what, what I'm gonna do here in the check if it's empty so if this check is actually correct and it's empty we're gonna set it to invalid we're gonna use this function set invalid and uh, uh, this is gonna take a field the whole field itself yeah the field yeah we're still in the function <laughs> I was thinking I'm gonna pass it first name but no this is a, another function so and it's gonna take an error message because if it invalidates it it makes uh, it makes this red and it shows us an error message and this is where our empty span is it's empty right now because there's no validation messages okay so th that span will be now uh, red and it will show an error message if it's invalidated and here let's do backticks so you can do a template string and let's pass this a, a dollar sign curly, curly braces to pass it a variable field dot name and this is an empty check so let's say must not be empty and if you understand the logic here we get the field no matter what field we're verifying if it's first name or last name or whatever and if it's empty we just say the name of that field which is why we added this attribute of name here the name of that field so let's say first name or last name or whatever must not be empty and it's going to show that error and then return true otherwise set it to valid we're going to use this function set valid which takes the field and that's it it doesn't have an error message because it's there is no error it's valid so let's create these uh, set valid and set invalid functions let's copy this set, va set invalid and let's create it so function set invalid uh, which takes a field and the message which is the error message and what it does is that it takes the field field dot class name uh, it takes the field and gives it a class name of invalid which now materialize CSS is going to make uh, red for us and then what we're going to do now is that we need to access this span we need to access this span and put text into it which is the error and make it red as well so what we're going to do is uh, I on purpose put the span after the input 
I mean, it's good practice to put the span after the input and not the label, obviously. But yeah, now what we're going to do is that we're going to take, because we have access to this field, what we're going to do is just access the next element on, on the DOM, which is the span all the time. After all the inputs, there's a span. And then get that and put the message and, and the color in it. So let's do that. So field dot next element sibling uh, dot inner HTML so we can set its text now to the message to this error message and we need as well to do field dot next element sibling dot uh, style dot color and this will be red because there's an error now let's copy this all of this and paste it and this is gonna be set valid so let's rename that uh, we could type this, but I think it's faster to just copy and paste like this. Uh, we're going to set the class to valid and we're going to set the message to empty because it might actually have already a message. So we need to reset it and let's set this to, to green. Actually, I don't think we need to set it to green anymore. Yeah, because it doesn't have a message. But anyways, let's just set it to green. You know what? I'm going to experiment with this. Let's comment this out and see later if we need it. Okay, so here we're validating our thing. So if it's empty, then uh, this validation happens. Now we need to check if it has uh, letters, if it has only letters. So what we're going to do, so if we pass this and we get here, that means there is a string. So we need to evaluate whether that string has only letters or it has numbers or squigglies like I don't know some special character someone put an email instead of a name whatever so let's do that so if I'm gonna use a function that we haven't created as well check if only letters and if you can't tell from the name I bet you can tell so first name first name takes the, the field and if that's the case we return and then if it's not the case, then we just return true. That means this is valid. Oh, actually, no. If this is not, if it doesn't have only letters, then we return. Okay, let's create this function. Let's copy that. Let's remove the space. And let's do function. Uh, check if only letters, which takes this field. And then here, what we're going to do is that we're going to use a regular expression and test against it. And if you don't know what regular expressions, this is the whole other topic, I suggest you like research about it. But it's basically some sort of expression pattern that tells us whether the string has certain characters or has a certain pattern. So let's do, uh, I'm going to type this out. Uh, so slash caret sign, which is shift number six in uh, QWERTY keyboards. Open this thingy, these uh, square brackets, and then do uh, lowercase a dash z, uppercase a dash uppercase z, and then or z if you're American, space plus uh, dollar sign slash and then dot test. So this is this is our regular expression, and not text test. So we test against this, and we test the field dot value. So if it does, um, so this test thing, if it returns uh, true, that means the characters in this are uh, are only these characters, so from A to Z, lowercase, from A to Z, uppercase. So if there's anything else in this string, this will fail and return false. So if it didn't return true, uh, if it does return true, that means it's valid. So let's set it to valid. Set valid field. And then uh, we return, oops, return true. Uh, else set invalid, uh, we pass it the field and we pass it an error message, so backticks. And let's pass it the field dot name. And this will say must contain uh, only letters. Letters. And we return false. Um, by the way, we're setting. So what we are doing here, we check if it has, uh, if it's empty. So if it's not empty, we actually do set it valid before checking here, and then if it 
doesn't have, if it has something other than letters, we set it to invalid. So it's actually sometimes being set to green and then it's being set to red, but because this is executed so fast, you don't see that. It's it, when you get here, both validations are executed and it's red instantly. So you don't see that green pop up. Okay. So what's next? We need to validate. Actually, let's check if this is working. Let's save. Let's check if it's working. All right, so we have a first name. If we don't type anything, we go away. It doesn't validate. And why is that? Oh yeah, because <laughs> of course, we haven't given uh, our input field this function. So we need to do something here. Where's our first name? So in our first name, we need to give another uh, attribute called on focus. Uh, wait, what did I type? On focus out which uh, which this is this executes when we're focused uh, when we focus the input which means when we do this and then when we do this this is focus out so we're only validating when when the user goes to another input field or like this uh, goes away so this is uh, out of focus then we validate we don't want to validate uh, each time someone types something because that's actually taxing if they're from a slow device or something that's not good to do so let's do uh, validate, we're gonna give it the function that we just created. So validate uh, first name. Let me make sure I spelled that correctly. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same for all our fields. So let's copy this and go to the input, give that here. So f to the input, I mean the last name input and give it validate last name. And then let's go to the password here give it validate password so validate password which which of course we haven't created yet but we will in a second and here uh, this is validate confirm password so confirm uh, password and be careful with this guys this is um lower uh, camel case so here we give it validate email so validate email okay so now it should work. Let's save this. Now, if we highlight or focus this and we go out of focus, it still doesn't work. Hmm. Interesting. Validate first name. Did I misspell something? Oh, silly me. I didn't um, include the script. <laughs> I didn't include our JavaScript file. Script.js. Of course, of course. Always the silly errors. So if we go away, it says field uh, first name must not be empty and if we type a normal name it validates it and if we go again to ruin it and type one it says first name must not contain must contain only letters brilliant so let's do the rest of the field so let's do now last name uh, it's still saying validate last name oh yeah because we haven't made that okay so let's actually this is gonna be exactly the same um, so let's copy this uh, let's do f validate last name. Let's just control D this uh, last name. Actually, this is going to be lowercase l, lowercase l, and then let's go again. Okay, let's close this. And yeah, last name is being validated. If we give it some numbers, it's not valid. Only letters, it's valid. Brilliant. Okay, let's start actually validating the uh, the password. Okay, so let's create here. Okay, let's separate these. These are utility functions, utility functions. And these are the validators, so validators. Okay, here we need function uh, validate password. And it won't take anything because we already have it up here. So let's see we, what we check first if it's um, if it's not empty. So password. Well, do I need to put this comment? I don't. Let's just do it like this. So check if empty. Yeah, I don't. I didn't want to do the same comment over and over again. You guys get it by this point. Uh, so check if empty and this will take the password and if it's empty return and then actually it's good to put comments okay so empty check 
Okay, okay. These these are the only comments I'm putting for the rest of the the video. I don't want to put it, make it too long. So um, now here we check the length of the password. So let's say uh, password. Okay, it must be must be in certain length. I don't want to type any values. You guys might change the values or off certain length. Grammatically speaking, that's the correct uh, terminology. So if not meet length, which is a function that we're going to create, which will take a field, and in this case it's the password, so and a minimum length and a maximum length. So here we want to uh, let's set it. Let's uh, set it to six and a hundred. We don't want password longer than a hundred characters or shorter than six characters. Return, and then here we're going to uh, check password against against our um, character set and of course this is a to do return true uh, this we haven't done yet so I'm gonna leave this empty space so that we can do it and let's actually write this meet length function okay so in the util under the utility functions here we do function um, I'm not forgetting. Meet, meet length, and stakes field, and minimum uh, length, and the maximum length. And this is uh, simple. It's just going to check if field dot value, which is the value that we typed in, uh, that the user typed, dot length of the string is bigger or equal minimum length um, or or not or uh, and field dot uh, value dot length is smaller than max length then in this case this password meets our uh, criterion for length so let's set valid this field which uh, yeah field and then let's return true return true else if because there's gonna be another case as well here field dot value um, value dot length I want to separate these because we can we can do uh, what we can do we can say else we will just say, oh, the password must be between 6 and 100, but it will never be more than 100. So let's just separate these cases. Most cases, it will be too short. So let's do them separately and, and give different messages for each case. So field value dot length is uh, lesser than minimum length. And this is good practice for programming. Your uh, most probable case that will happen in an if statement chain uh, goes first. Because you know it's better for performance. I, I come from a, a games uh, <laughs> games programming background, so performance is really important. But obviously, in this case, it's not. It's like very. It's a tiny bit of JavaScript being executed on a browser. Browser. So invalid. Set invalid, and we want to set this field that we have invalid, and we want to give it an error message, uh, which will have the field. The name. And we'll say must be at least, and we're gonna put as well another variable here min length characters long. In this case, it's six, so it will have this error message. Oops, uh, put a, a semicolon and then return false, and then else. Because there's no other, uh, the only left uh, option or like case is that it's actually longer. So set invalid, invalid field dot value, no, just field. <laughs> um, and the message will be, I'm getting ahead of myself, the message will be, we'll give it the variable with the backticks, remember, field dot name must be. Um, longer. Wait, is it longer? Shorter. <laughs> Shorter. 
I hope it's not longer than 100 characters, shorter than minimum, maximum length characters uh, must be a shorter than char 100 characters long. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Shorter than 100 characters, you get the vibe. Okay, so, and oh, I forgot we return, of course, we return false. And then just in case, return false. Uh, wait, we'll never reach this block. Yeah, we'll never reach. I mean, even VS Code this time, we will never reach this. <laughs> okay, so this is fine. Meets length is done. So if we go back to our uh, validate password, where's our validate password uh, here? So this is okay. It's gonna check if it's empty, and this is okay now because we've written it. It's gonna check between six and a hundred, and if you guys wanna change it to eight, you can change it. It's up to you. Um, I'm actually just gonna put it at four because we're gonna be testing this a lot. And I don't want to type too many, uh, too many things. Okay. So here we need uh, to check. This is the big fish. <laughs> we need to check if it meets a certain criteria. And I'm going to write a set of, uh, cri uh, criterions. And so first one would be, first one would be if you require the password to at least have some letters. This is the, the base level of security. Uh, just some letters, you know. Okay, so this will say A. And then the second case, I'm going to write them like this. The second case, when you require them to have at least one letter and one number. So A, and then, uh, what is it? Uh, let's say A1, which will signify a letter and a number. And the third case will be, and I'll, I'll explain why I put them in different cases like this. When, when they require you, which is really annoying, I hate it. When they require you, like, at least one uppercase, one lowercase, and a number, which is this, uh, uppercase A, uppercase, uh, lowercase A, and one. And then the fourth case, which is, if you want to be obnoxious to your users, you can ask them a lowercase, a, a uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and a squiggly. Or, I mean, a special character. I don't know why I call them squigglies. They look like squigglies to me. <laughs> okay, so if uh, not uh, contains characters and we give it the password, because we're validating the password, and we're gonna give it one of these cases. So I, I put it this way so it will be dynamic for you guys if you wanna have all the cases and if you wanna change it or whatever, or whichever one you wanna do. So let's pass it one right now. I just wanted to have some letters, okay? Okay, so one, and then let's do return if it doesn't contain this character. I mean, the, the naming of this function is not the best, but the, let's just do with it for now. So let's actually create this function. Um, contains character, characters. So function contains characters and it takes a field and it takes that uh, code or case or whatever. I don't know why, for me code sounds cool, code. Okay, so we're gonna declare a regular expression pattern. So let regular expression, regex, short for regular expression. And we're gonna do a switch case, a switch uh, thingy. Um, so switch code. And if you don't know what a switch uh, is, is that it takes a, a uh, it takes a variable which signifies all oh, which block of this which is going to be executed. Uh, and then, for example, if we pass it one, it's going to do something. If we pass it two, it's going to do something else, etc. Um, it has a default case. Let's do default. And um, and by the way, here is going to be a colon if you're not. Um, if you're not familiar with the syntax of a switch, it's going to return false, the default case. Uh, and then we're going to have case one, which, oops, oops, I made that mistake, <laughs> colon, case one, this is only letters, or at least a letter. And a regular expression, I'm going to start grabbing the regular expressions from, uh, from this uh, paste bin that I've created for you guys to grab them. Um, did some research online and found these and, and I'm gonna link as well this cool, cool website that you can test your regular expressions against called, uh, regex101.com. Um, you can, I'll, sh I'll demonstrate it for a second. So this is the regular expression for at least one letter, one number. So if we put our regular expression here, it says that the regular expression is valid. So we start testing against it. If we put only letters, it says, it doesn't match the your uh, thing. It doesn't match the string. Your string doesn't satisfy this regular expression. And if you put some numbers, 
and it says, hey, match. It matches your expression. So we test whether this expression is valid or not. Let me close that. And uh, let me grab the only letters one. And here, this is our regular expression. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do, we're going to create a function, another one. <laughs> so function, uh, this function will test against a uh, regular expression. So match with reg regular expression, reg x, takes the regular expression itself and the field, the error message, or just message, or just message. Why not? Why be too expressive? So if field the value the match regex if it matches this regular expression that means this field is valid so what we do is that we set this field to valid set valid field and we return true and oops else um, else it's invalid so set in um, invalid and our field and the error message uh, we actually passed that, we don't write it here, we'll write it upstairs <laughs> and return false and we go here, where's our switch, yeah here um, what we do now is we create uh, this uh, error message and we give it to this function so match with regular expression and we give it the uh, regular expression that we just uh, created here, declared here, and, and assigned a value here to here. So regular expression, our field is the field that we pass to this function from here, and our message will be uh, must contain at least uh, one letter. Okay, so, but the problem here, if we just call this function, uh, it's gonna set it to invalid, but we want this to return a value so that this function here, where are we using it? Let me select that. We are using it in the password. So we want this to return uh, a value. So what we can do is that we can do if, if this is true, return true, but what we can do, since we put here return, we can just return this function. So which returns the result returned from here. So this returns it to this and this returns it to this and we get the value upstairs. So return that and let's actually just copy this or let's not copy actually the cop copy in here will be useless. Okay, screw copy and let's just type it. <laughs> Case two. This is, oops, this is letters and numbers, at least one letter and one number, and numbers, and we're going to have a, our regular expression for that is, let's grab it from here, so at least one letter and one number, it's here, and uh, here, again, did I say this, I'm going to put this in the, in the description for you guys to grab, probably said it, but why not say it again, so we're going to return, match with regular expression I hope I didn't typo anything I hate typos when I'm recording okay so and they only happen when I'm recording <laughs> must contain one at least one letter and one number Okay, so we need another case. So case three. Here we have uh, so one uppercase and one lowercase. So uppercase, lowercase, and number. Um, reg x equals. Let's grab that. So this one, the third one. One uppercase. Oops. Let's grab with the slashes. And here we do return match with regex, regex field, and the error message will be uh, must contain, must contain uh, at least one uppercase, one lowercase, 
and one number. One uppercase, one lowercase, letters, letter. I don't know. You can think more about this, what's appropriate to write and write it. Um, okay, so case three, or case four rather, case four, which is the most annoying. <laughs> uppercase, lowercase, uh, number, and special character. And we're gonna return match with reg, reg. Why oh, am I typing the whole thing? I could just type enter regex field. And this will say must contain. Oh boy, let's just copy this. <laughs> one one letter, one number. Or oh, one uppercase, one letter, one number. <laughs> and one special character for your security okay okay I need to wrap these all right so we've handled all the cases let's go up here when we where we validate our password where is that so here so now uh, this is actually gonna work so if it does not contain so we will put one here. So we're just testing for letters, right? So this should validate the password. It should work. And let's let's test it. And where is it here? Okay. So if we go to password and we go away, password must not be empty. Brilliant. If we type only three, because we set the minimum, did we? Four. Yeah. If we type only four, it says it must be at least four. If we type exactly four, I I actually typed one two three four one two three four. And it will say must contain at least one letter and I'll type an A and it's going to be happy now. And if I type only A's, oh, okay, interesting, why is it valid? Case one, hmm, okay, silly me. <laughs> It's, I actually gave it the case one, which uh, requires only letters. Okay, let's test the other cases. So case two, which requires letters and numbers. So we go here, we go away, must not be empty. Uh, I'm going to put AAA111 is going to be happy. If I remove those last three 111s and put AAA, it will be, yeah, one letter, one number. Let's go quickly. Let's type the most obnoxious one, number four. I didn't save, save. And let's do, I'm gonna do A, 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 one, 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 one. It's gonna be like, oh, shouldn't have been happy. Why is it happy? Number four, regex. Oh, we didn't declare our regex here. <laughs> regex equals this one. This one right here, the fourth one. And let's go again. So A A A A one one and then it's not happy and even if I put uppercase it's not happy and now I put an at symbol. Now it's happy. Cool. Now let's do the confirm password. Alright. So let's confirm our user's password. Uh Validate password underneath validate password. I'm gonna do validate uh, confirm password. So function validate confirm password. And here, what we need to do is that we don't need to validate this the same way we validate this. What we need to do here, we need to check if password is valid. If password is invalid, we don't even need to check if they're the same or not because we need to satisfy this first. So if password is invalid and we come here and we type the same invalid thing, it, sh it will say, uh, oh, your password needs to be valid first. And then when that's valid, we check, uh, what we call, we check that if it's, um, if it's the same, I don't know why I brain farted there. If it's the same and if it's the same, we validate. Um, I don't think we need to check if it's empty. Let me just actually just check if the, uh, the password is empty. So, Let's do, I mean, it's valid. So we will do if password dot class name equals or, or does not equal uh, valid. In that case, the password is not validated. Yes, uh, is not validated yet or is not valid. So we need to set this invalid. 
so this would be when someone clicked so um, when they have clicked here and then they unfocused um, I mean focused out of it it checks if this is valid or not so set invalid and takes a confirm password confirm password this one right here and we give it an error message of password is not or actually password let's just say password must be valid which refers to the password and not confirm password so and we just return and then we need to now check if they're similar if if they're the same if they're identical if if they match okay so if they match how do we check that we do if password dot value does not equal uh, confirm password dot value quite straightforward set invalid and we invalidate confirm password we don't invalidate password because it could be valid so we do passwords must match must oops must oh wow match wow that's impressive <laughs> that's like stuttering but with typing okay return <laughs> sorry if you have a stutter don't I don't intend to be insensitive else set valid confirm password all right so we return true just in case we get here all right so if it survives all of these checks that means it's valid and we just set it to valid okay so let's let's see if this is working uh, we go to password and of course it must not be empty oh let me change the case to one. Oh, by the way um, we could if you want the password to have any characters as long as it's like just a certain length you could just comment this out and and I will for now so our only criterion would just be from 4 to 100 and, and by the way if you want me to test um, if it's when it's more than a hundred let's do that and it says oh it's must be shorter than a hundred that will never happen <laughs> okay so one two three four meets the criterion and if I do one two three four here it's valid and if I don't type anything passwords must match and if this is invalid and then I do something here password must be valid brilliant okay let's go back let's now validate the the email which is the easiest bit so um, let's validate email function validate email and this will uh, this will check if it's empty so if check if empty um, email um, if it's empty return uh, return just return <laughs> And if, and we're actually gonna add another uh, case for checking against email regular expression pattern. So contains characters, and we're gonna pass our email, and we're gonna pass case five, which we haven't created yet. Uh, return, return, and then return true if it survives these checks, which it should if they wanna sign up to our amazing social media website. I mean, it's called social ape. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> All right, let's do case five. And let's comment say an email pattern or regex, and our reg regex will be this uh, last one. All right, so let's grab this and let's go back, paste it, and now let's return the result of the match with regular expression and we'll take our regular expression our field and the message will be must be a valid email address all right let's save and and actually let's close these two we don't need them anymore let's do something that's not a valid email 
So yeah, it says must be a valid email. And if it doesn't have anything, it says it must not be empty. And if it's actually a valid email, so john at email.com, we click sign up, it, we go through. So actually, if we don't click sign up, it still validates it. So if I go away, it's now valid. But now what we need to do, we need to handle when the form is submitted and we need to uh, not let this happen because obviously this is a major security leak uh, issue. So you do ABC here and you sign up, you can see the passwords here and that's not, uh, obviously that's really bad. So let's fix that. Um, so I'll, I'll do this actually at the top. So here, after the, before the validators actually, let's do form, um, form. Let's actually put a, put a comment here saying um, handle form. And we need to attach an event, uh, an event to this. We need, we need to listen to an event of type submit. So we do add event listener, type submit. So when this form is submitted, we wanna do the following. So function, which takes an event, um, and now we need to handle what this, what we do with this event. So first thing we need to do is we need to prevent default behavior, which is what you saw putting all those um, parameters in the link. So event dot prevent default. And now we need to do an if statement and we need to check if all our fields are valid. So if validate, um, uh, so first name, and validate uh, last name. Remember these return boolean uh, boolean values, and if they don't return anything, that means uh, they're not true. So this still works. So and now validate um, password and validate confirm password and validate email. Uh, let's save so that it just formats. Oh, actually, I need to open a code block here. Save so it, uh, it formats it properly. And now we need to get the, um, before we do anything, we need to get the username, the user's name, so that we can use it later and display it in a panel and say welcome user. And then, so let's do const name equals um, first name dot value. And Let's get our, because what we want to do now is we want to get our container and then uh, show loading bar here and then show a welcome panel. So we want to add stuff to our container. So let's get that container. So const container equals document dot query selector. And let's grab our div dot container. Mm -hmm. We always, uh, almost always have one container in a page. If you don't, if you have multiple ones, add an ID to one and use, uh, grab it by the ID. So const loader, we'll do uh, the loading bar thing now. So let's create actually, so let's do document.create uh, element, and this will be a div. Um, we're gonna use this thing right here, uh, CSS, actually in components. So preloader, we're gonna use this indeterminate um, loader thing. So it's a div with class progress and inside of it a div with a class indeterminate. So this is our div, this is the main div. So let's give it the class. So loader dot class name equals progress. And we need the div that's inside it. So let's do another one, const uh, loading bar equals document dot create um, not attribute element oops what is that create element and this will be another div and we'll do loading bar dot class name equals uh, what was that indeterminate yeah indeterminate like this and now we need to put this inside of this so what we need to do is that loading bar dot um, append child and let's append um, no actually loader dot append child loader dot append child and we append it loading bar because loader is the parent 
So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something that mimics asynchronous code, and I'll explain in a second. Let's do set timeout, and this will take a function and a value in milliseconds. Let's do one second. So in milliseconds, it's 1000. And this function will now... So here we've created this loader thing, right? We need to show the bar and then after one second, show the welcome panel. All right, let me do that. So const loader div. Now we can't use this div because this is not added into the, uh, the DOM. Um, wait, actually we didn't add it to the DOM. So container dot append child and give it this uh, loader. So now the loader is added to the container and now we need to fetch it. We can't use the same because this is different. So uh, let's do loader div equals document dot query selector and let's get div dot progress again assuming there's only one in the page and let's create this panel that we're going to show document.create element and this will be a div and panel class name equals uh, I think it's card panel yeah card whoops what did I click card panel and we'll give it a class of green so that it looks green so it's it has a color of green it's green <laughs> document create we're gonna create the text inside it and this will be um, a span so create element span and then we need to uh, add text to the span so let's do text dot um, append child and here we need to create this text so document dot create um, no uh, text node text node and this will say um, welcome now sign up successful welcome to social ape um, oh, actually this needs to be these needs need to be backticks because we it's a template string we need to use the name here so let's do uh, let's put the name variable here and yeah that's done so this creates the span and adds that to it so let's do panel dot append child and let's append the text to the panel and let's do container dot replace child and this takes the uh, the new one and then the old one so the new one is this panel that we just created and the old one is the loading div so the loader div the loading bar and uh, yeah so this is it for the the reason why i did this set timeout thing to mimic um what we call uh, asynchronous code is that in a real life scenario you're going to use asynchronous code here to um, talk to the server or whatever backend you're using uh, to log in this user and what you would do uh, generally it will be a promise or an async await so in this promise before you uh, you start to uh, you send this data to the server, you set it to the loading bar, and then when the promise is fulfilled, then you change the loading bar to the welcome panel. So uh, during that uh, downtime, it will show the loading bar, but here there's no server, so we just mimic it using set timeout and we give it one second. And what we do here, we create that bar, we add it to the container, and then after one second, we show that welcome bar. So let's see if this is working. And uh, let's fill out our form. Otherwise, it won't uh, it won't go through. And wait, actually, let me refresh just to show you that the, this behavior won't happen. So John Doe uh, password will be a one two three four five six a one two three four five six, and the email will be John at um, email dot com. Everything is valid. Sign up. We get the loading bar, and there we go. After one second we get the um, this let's make this text white because uh, it's it has a better contrast with uh, with thing with the with the green color so let's do text uh, dot class name equals uh, white text
text. Save that. Oh, we have to fill the form again. John Doe, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. And then let's do John. You can write some other data, it doesn't matter. And now the text is why it looks better. So yeah, this is it, guys. This is our form. And uh, it's working fine. Everything is being validated as we are focus out of that field. So um, the, I want to go over something quickly before I finish the video. Why it's important to do client-side validation is that it's recommended to do both client-side and, and, and server-side. Of course, at least server-side. But for me personally, I like to do client side validation because sometimes you'll be working with a server where you don't control what you get as output. Maybe you don't control um, the errors that you get or whatever. So you want to do client side validation just as a second line of defense. Um, I will put all the links uh, to the to the regular expressions and reg 101, whatever, everything is in well, the code as well. I'll put it in a GitHub repository and put it in the description down below. Please, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe. It means a lot to me. And uh, let me know if you liked something. And uh, I hope you are not intimidated by this video being this long. Uh, usually you would actually use uh, other libraries like Validator, for example, to do this. But it's really, really good that you understand what's actually happening behind the scene. Uh, before you use any framework or library. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you soon. Bye.